Today, I start the wave propagation presented by Dr. Srinivasan from St. Peter's Engineering College. Different modes of wave propagation. Propagation of radio waves takes place by different modes. The mechanism being different in each case. Based on that, it can be classified as first one, ground wave propagation or surface wave propagation. Second one, space wave propagation or a tropospheric wave propagation. Third one, sky wave propagation or ionospheric propagation. Before we discuss different modes of wave propagation, let us see the allocation of frequencies for broadcasting. Here one more important, depending on the frequencies, the wave propagations are split in different categories. Okay, so here allocation of frequencies for broadcasting. Long wave band, this is not used in India. Medium wave band, the frequency is 300 to 3000 kilohertz. 531 kilohertz to 1602 kilohertz with a sound space 9 kilohertz. Short wave band, HF 3 to 30 megahertz, VHF 30 to 300 megahertz, VHF 300 to 3000 megahertz. Next to SHF. So here SHF means super high frequency. This band frequency is is also known as the centimeter band or centimeter wave as the wavelength range from 1 to 10 centimeters. Different layers on earth. So here, ionosphere layer, myosphere, ozone layer, troposphere, stratosphere, troposphere, earth. So from Earth, according to the length, the layers are split in different names. Are they? So this we'll see later. So here, ground wave propagation or surface wave propagation. What is the ground wave propagation? Or sometimes it is also called the surface wave propagation. Medium wave propagates along the surface of the Earth. So in ground wave propagation, the frequency maximum three megahertz. Below three megahertz frequency, signals are transmitted in ground wave or surface wave propagation. So that is the low frequencies, three megahertz means. Okay, medium wave, next part. Medium wave induces current in the ground over which it passes and thus lose some energy by absorption. Range of such a coverage depends on frequency, power of the transmitter, ground conditions like a salinity and the conductivity of the ground or water over which the waves propagate and the water vapor content of the air. So here, in a ground wave propagation, the frequency 3 megahertz. Below 3 megahertz frequency signals or electromagnetic waves are transmitted in this ground wave propagation. That is very, very important. So here, that is one of the drawbacks. For example, above 3 megahertz frequency signals are there. What will happen? Next, we will go for the next problem. So the frequency is bounded in ground wave. So that's we will go for the space wave or sky wave propagation. Next, receiver signal strength, receiver signal strength V equal to 125 HR means receiver height, HT transmitter height into high current by lambda T. 120 
phi equal to characteristic impedance of free space. HT, transmitter height equal to effective height of the transmitting antenna. HR equal to effective height of the receiving antenna. I equal to antenna current. D equal to distance from the transmitting antenna. Next wave propagation is space wave propagation or troposphere wave propagation. They travel more or less in straight lines as they depend on the line of sight condition. Here, the line of sight L LOS is very, very important. LOS means on earth, transmitter and receiver, in between, there is no abstraction. Direct signal transmitter from transmitter to receiver. The signal is transmitted directly from transmitter to receiver. That is called the line of sight. So they are limited in their propagation by the curvature of the earth. Space wave can have two components. First one, direct wave and a reflected wave. From the surface of the earth, direct wave will be steady and strong. Line of sight, LOS, is equal to root of 2A of under root HT plus root of HR EDM, where A equal to radius of the earth, that is equal to 6,370 kilometer, that, that is equal to 6.37 in the power of 6 meters. HT, transmitter antenna height in meter. HR, receiving antenna height in meters. Radio waves normally propagate in a curved path due to refraction, in the troposphere. It can be noted that not only the transmitting antenna height, but also the receiving antenna height is equal important. So here, one thing, one important point, the transmitting antenna and receiving antenna height. These two heights are equal. Then only line of sight condition will be satisfied. Isotropic antenna. All of you know isotropic antenna. Isotropic antenna is a basic antenna. Isotropic antenna is a reference antenna. The isotropic antenna is always radiates power equal in all directions. That is called isotropic antenna. Duct propagation. This is also one of the important parameters in wave propagation. The refractive T N of the troposphere under normal weather conditions, gradually falls at the rate of minus 40 to minus 80 units per kilometer with the height above the earth. When the refractive is minus 157 N units per kilometer or more, ducting mode exists. During ducting, the VHF or VHF radio waves are refracted. That means bent where you passed, so it has to bump against the ground and again reflect. This phenomena is called the duct propagation. Next, adjacent channel interference. Adjacent channel interference may occur as the result of the beads between any two of these carriers. The difference of 1.5 megahertz produces a coarse bead fragment. This is the diagram of the adjacent channel interference. Layers during the day and night. So here, in this diagram, one diagram is a daytime, another is a nighttime. According to the atmosphere, the layers color will be heights are changes. Next, sky wave propagation or ionosphere propagation. So, what is a sky wave propagation? Below 30 megahertz frequency, signals are transmitted in a sky wave propagation. The frequency range of sky wave propagation. Okay. Short wave propagates as sky waves. Ionization of upper spots of the Earth's atmosphere plays 
a part in the propagation of the high frequency waves. Due to the energy received from the sun, the atmospheric molecules split into positive and negative ions and remain ionized for a long period of time. What are the ionospheric layers? Ionospheric extends from 50 to 400 kilometer and has got ionized particles. When sun rays pass through this ionosphere due to different densities, imaginary but distinct layers are formed like D layer, E layer, F1 and F2 layers. What is the D layer? It is the lowest layer of the ionosphere. Its average height is 70 km and average thickness is 10 km. Degree of ionization depends on the altitude of the sun above origin. It disappears at night. It observes medium frequency and high frequency waves to some extent and reflects some VLF and LF waves. E layer. This layer is about D layer. Its average height is 100 km with a thickness of 20 km. It also disappears at night as ions recombine into molecules. This is due to the absence of sun at a night when radiation is no longer received. It aids medium frequency surface wave propagation to some extent and reflects some high frequency waves in a daytime. Next, ES layer. It is a spheroidic E layer, a thin layer of very high density. Sometimes it appears with the E layer. When the ES layers occurs, it often persists during the night also. To say it does not have an important part in long distance propagation, but sometimes permits unexpectedly good reception. What is a spheroidic E? Irregular scattered patches of relatively density, ionization that develops sessionally within the E region that reflect under scattered radio frequency up to 150 megahertz. Spheroidic E is a regular daytime occurrence over the equatorial regions and is common in the temperate latitude in late spring, early summer, and to a lesser degree in early winter. It can sometimes support reflections for distances up to 2,400 km. F1 layer. It exists at a height of 180 km in daytime and gets combined with the F2 layer at a night time. In a daytime, it is a thickness is about 200 km. Although some high frequency waves are reflected from it, most passes through it to the reflected by the F2 layer. The main effect of F1 layer is more absorption for high frequency waves. The absorption effect of F1 layer and any other layer is doubled because high frequency waves are observed on the way off and also on the way down. F2 layer. It is the most important reflective medium for high frequency waves. Its approximate thickness can be up to 200 km and his height ranges from 290 to 400 km in daytime. At a night, it falls to about 300 km. When it combines with the F1 layer, its height and ionization density vary terminationally depending on upon the time of the day. The average ambient temperature and the sunspot cycle. Virtual light. That the electromagnetic wave is refracted. It is bent down gradually rather than sharply. However, below the ionized layer, the path of the instant and the refracted rays is exactly same as the same as if reflection has taken place from a surface located at a greater height called the virtual height of this layer. 
Yeah, this is the diagram of the virtual height. In this diagram, actual height and uh, virtual height. Thus, once the virtual height is known, the angle of incidence required for the wave to return to the ground at a selected spot can be calculated easily. Critical frequency, FC. It is uh, <coughs> obtained by sending a signal pulse directly upwards. The pulse may be reflected back to Earth and the time is measured to give an indication of the height of the layer. As the frequency is increased, a point is reached where the signal will pass right through the layer and on the next one or into outer space. The frequency at which this occurs is called the critical frequency. Maximum visual frequency, MUF is defined as the highest frequency that can be used for skyway communication between two given points on the earth. Here, two given points means transmitter and receiver. So here, MUF is equal to critical frequency during cos theta. That is equal to FC secant theta. Thank you for watching this video.